John, first of all, I want to find out from you. This is a huge win for Manchester City. How much of a surprise is this um, cast decision? Well, Juliet, you know, uh, I would normally be used to be talking about uh, what happens on the pitch. And I think like a lot of people, I can't claim to be a massive legal expert. But what I can do is tell you that the word from within the game, even within just hours of that February 14th ruling against Manchester City, was that City themselves were confident that if they took this to an appeal, that they would win the appeal. So I don't see this as an enormous surprise. And when you look at the cash ruling, and you see that basically they said that quite simply because of the way that FFP investigations are structured, there was no way that the evidence that they thought they were presenting would in any way be able to show that Manchester City had hidden or in any way disguised the way they used their funds. Then you can see that perhaps Manchester City were right to be confident all the way through. What is the point if you have financial fair play rules if um, it's not being enforced? Well, again, and with the greatest respect, you know, I think a lot of people are bringing their own personal or club prejudice towards this. I also suspect that a lot of the reporting uh, around this topic hasn't perhaps been done by reporters with a full understanding of this case. Because FFP, of course, is very important. When FFP came along, it came at a time when football finances were arguably worse than they are today, particularly at the top level. And it was introduced to stop the prospect of clubs going out of business, going broke. They had to be sustainable. What has happened, I suspect, since then, Juliet, is that some of the more established football clubs, some of the powerful football clubs, have been alarmed by the arrival of clubs like PSG, uh, clubs like Manchester City, clubs backed by sovereign wealth funds. And there is a school of thought that actually those who have already um, become powerful, uh, in a way, kind of pulled up the stepladder behind them and said, we don't want anybody following us. So again, I think you might look at some degree of prejudice in the way that people are approaching this one. You have to step away from this and look at this simply as a ruling. I think that the problem may be in the drafting of the implementation of FFP. Nothing wrong with it as a principle, as a concept. But as we're discovering now, there are legal flaws, perhaps, if you try and pursue a case such as this one. Is it going to be the end of um, FFP? I don't think it'll be the end of it, uh, Juliet, but I think what it will be is it will be a real slap in the face for UEFA. I mean, what I did notice was that back on February the 14th, when they handed out this two-year ban, people who actually had no vested interest in this said, wow, that seems to be a really harsh and maybe even disproportionate punishment. So I think what UEFA needs to do is look at the way that they themselves are run, because quite honestly, there's been some massive oversight. Whoever it was that did not realize that their five-year time bar, i.e. the time period in which these alleged uh, infringements of FFP were no longer going to be admissible as evidence, they need to be looked at. And then whoever it was that felt that they still had a strong enough case to impose this two-year ban, well, that was a mistake as well. So I think everybody in football recognizes that there is a place for FFP. There is a place for responsible, sustainable um, finances in football. But I think similarly, this has taught us that you cannot use UEFA or rules such as this to go after clubs such as Manchester City for any other reason. John, thank you very much for your time here on TV3. Thank you.